a critique of how we have fooled ourselves for years. DevOps is bull shit. How do you guys feel? Type one in the chat if you think DevOps is bullshit. Okay, we got a lot of ones in the chat. Okay. Let's find out. Over the years, it has developed into an unholy beast of division and tunnel vision. Why did we stop dreaming bigger? What happened to tearing down silos, increasing engineering velocity, and adding value? Remember the things DevOps was supposed to do? Those are also all the sentences I would expect to hear in TechCrunch. What are you doing? Tearing down silos, and we are increasing velocity. Adding value? Hell yeah. Uh, but the reality is, outside of Fang and the most well-funded companies, your team is probably doing one of the following. You've got a DevOps team. Congrats. That's not DevOps. I'd wager most of what they're doing is using Terraform and YAML to do menial tasks for engineering team. Pick, is this true? Is this what you do, Pick? <laughs> Pick's like, no, I use Haskell. I, no, it's Haskell. Um, it's not a lie. <laughs> Damn it. Need a database? File a ticket with DevOps. Need an IM role? File a ticket with DevOps. Before long, your massive team of engineers has fully saturated your understaffed DevOps team's backlog. This approach does not scale. Uh, you are doing DevOps, but it feels like shit. I like this article. Uh, DevOps, the free-for-all where each engineer does it, uh, the necessary ops to do their job. Best practices, we'll invent them along the way. Secure, I'm too busy increasing conversion rates. Naming conventions, nah, 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 prod, prod, nah, production, nah. Okay, that's not actually funny. That's uh, This is not funny. Okay, there's nothing funny about that. I don't think we should laugh about this because it's a real issue. That we've all had, it's just, it's not okay. That's not okay. Cost management, deleting unused cloud resources. Nope, we, uh, we've we got AWS credits to burn. The problem is most engineers don't want to do operations work. They want to build the product. They want to add tangible value, but organizations will force this upon them and engineers will either work with what they've already got, guess their way through some of the new cloud service, or the DevOps task will slowly become the responsibility of a few individuals that become the DevOps team. The worst part of this scenario is that deadlines rule. The product stakeholders don't see ops. When was the last time you saw a product manager high five the ops person and say, Fast fucking auto scaler! Fucking auto scaler! Fucking auto scaler! Where the hell did it go? Where did auto scale? Did I just lose it? Fast fucking auto scaler! It's true. No one high fives the auto scaler guy. It's very, very true. Nobody cares about you. I'm sorry. Slowly, your team feels like a. a a malleable and nature of DevOps stagnant into rigid infrastructure as teams stop making the harder operation decisions and just bend their software around what they have. In the end, all infrastructure eventually becomes a platform. How easy is yours to change? Very hard. Operations is a commodity. Let's act like it. I've been on the operations side of engineering for a long time. I, is this is this going to be a serverless article? Is this a serverless article? Have I been bamboozled? I think I might be. I think I might have been bamboozled right now. Called it serverless. Um, I've been developing in Ruby since uh, since Rails 1.0. Okay, well, there's your first mistake. Before that, I wrote some of the trashiest PHP in the world that has seen. No, you just sounds like you wrote PHP. Uh, I've had the I had the opportunity to migrate from a data center to AWS EC2 when it was launched in 2006, and I've become more experienced in operations. I was pigeonholed into the DevOps role. To date, I've deployed over 200 production grade Kubernetes clusters across a handful of companies. This man, Kubernetes, okay? This man, Kubernetes. Want to know the secret? All right, let's do this. You know what I'm talking about? I've copied and pasted the same damn Terraform module for every single one of them. My job felt like a scam, but Welcome companies pay me to forget to turn off alerts! Dang it! Dang it! Karen, I need an intern. Yep. Got an intern role coming up. I need one. I need it. Yeah, I need it right now. Okay. The response, the responsibility you said, um, there's just this thing that happens every now and then, Karen, that might need a little bit of taking care of. And I just figured, you know, maybe, you know, maybe an intern, you know, yeah, it's, a, it's about the, alert. yeah, it's about, it's about the alerts. <laughs> I 
had built a copy pasta driven single user platform as a service and no one cared as so long nothing was broken you've made it this far so i'm just going to say it the companies building DevOps teams are going to, uh, in the right direction, but they need to be moving away from infrastructure configuration management and towards platform engineering and enabling dev developer self-service. Okay, I like this. This is kind of what Netflix's way is. The knowledge silos are good, and silos are a feature, not a bug. Expertise is a good thing. DevOps is bullshit. Okay, 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 let's see. Continuous advancements through teamwork, efficiency in communication, uh, el elevated morale leaving the door open to suggestions for betterment sign me up right wait i'm going backwards aren't i test release deploy operate monitor plan code build test release poop I agree this model worked when a cloud was simple and made sense even back when we had a few virtual machines maybe an s3 bucket and a couple of queues this loop was achievable what threw wrench and everything was growing complexity of our system the operational burden of those systems and the compliance for many organizations operations teams inevitably became DevOps gatekeepers at every phase of the loop planning planning today requires knowledge and trade-offs of the cloud services as the cloud has gotten more complex teams are left with a few options work with what they've got or sync with ops to see what their backlog looks like yeah I, I i can feel this i can feel this we've had some similar things at netflix where we've we've been gated by our ability to interact with other services this is this is real organizations that have invested in a platform engineering have either a golden path already identified or enable teams to research and develop new golden paths rapidly this flexibility is key to a great platform we aren't uh building golden roads they are paths golden paths should provide direction and guardrails but they ex but be acceptable when the business needs to change okay coding is becoming more and more of a hodgepodge of cloud apis this is a good thing we should want to run or we should want to write and run less code Okay, I agree with this. Yeah, I think some of the problems is that to, to like, you know, like I know we're talking about golden paths and all this stuff. Like to even develop some of these things and make this stuff happen just requires such good ability to like foresee what your team needs that one man's golden path is another man's doo-doo path, right? It's just like, I find this to be a very, di like, I love the idea. I'm just like curious how well this actually works in realness oh, am i saying that this yes the dyslexia is real shut up uh do you know what's worse than waiting uh waiting through an ops backlog during a planning phase missing your deadline and working late because you're waiting for someone on the ops team to update the im policies and create kms keys because you didn't realize the sns topics were in different regions than your squish cues if you're not snissing and squissing then you don't know shit um a great internal developer platform has con uh, conventions in place to handle a small, tedious bits of the cloud, like IM and KMS, that take uh, uh, the most amount of time to address. They focus on engineers' intentions, not making engineers worry about implementation details. Why can't they just change it? Just let them jump in there and get some stuff done. You know what I mean? Uh, just teasing, Brian. You know I love you. I know you do. Okay? But don't make fun of my dyslexia. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. CICD. That one term Dave talks about, which I don't think he knows what it means, but he says he does. The fuzzy boundary between development and production. These phases are so fraught with bullshit that they have become meme-worthy. Worked in, uh, f worked fine in dev. Ops is a uh, ops problem now. This is great. This is great. But that's, oh my, can I just zoom out a little bit? All right, but it's uh, an ops problem. Is uh, It's an entire organization problem. I'm convinced that CICD phase is the root of where frustration divisions grow between operations and engineering teams. So this is actually, this is all one phase for each team, right? The, there is no, the platform at Netflix provides like ways to monitor, ways to scale, ways to do a lot of stuff. But like when we release, it's not someone else's item right we actually have to take care of it we have to watch the whole dang thing you know how nervous i was when i was launching our first uh like next gen network stack and i put fifty thousand people into a new network stack and i just watched it being like please keep playing netflix and it like worked people kept playing netflix and i'm like yes we've got it right like and so then you know of course you put a bunch of people in there and you're just like yes and then you start monitoring logs and you're seeing what's going on and then you realize no one actually got the next network stack and then you go back to the shitting your pants problem oh man like like this was just part of netflix part of being on a team was when you're launching stuff you you did everything you did it from you do the whole soup to nuts we just have platforms that are available to make things work right
Uh, in production, we are running in containers, but developing developing in container is too slow. So the team leans towards ASDF and a readme uh, full of stuff to copy, pasta, and pray. During a sprint, an engineer adds convert image magic to the mix to support manipulating images and forgets to update the Docker file, and then production goes down. <laughs> I mean, that's... How? How? Por que, Maria? Uh, this is where trust between developers and operations begins to erode. Internal developer platforms should allow an engineer to run their applications where they want, how they want. Lambda and Docker, sure. K8s, build, uh, build pack, sure. VMs and tarball, sure. One thing, that they, one thing that I noticed that they didn't say in here is canaries, right? Like, you wouldn't have really been able to take down production if you would have canaried the first 100 200 300 people go through your stuff would just be getting zeros right and you'd go oh wait a second we've royally screwed this up let's back it up people so canaries are beautiful canaries always canary unfortunately many of the platforms today force developers to run on kubernetes a uh, great developer platform meets engineers where they are it should be flexible in architecture but opinionated in self-service uh operate and monitor the final stages of this perfect loop model are uh, arguably where ops should be that'd be great except for now we've got series to cover that huh if the devops team ships a postgres rds instance it will run fine forever that is until the application starts using it all of a sudden a cascade of n plus ones hit the <laughs> cpu spikes and queries grind to a halt all of a sudden everyone's using the new react server components and nobody knows why it's so chatty but all of a sudden you're making 900 requests just and you have no effing clue why it's so bad oh yeah i love i love it love it i cannot wait i cannot wait for the next year and a half when people come all the way around and be like why did we do that uh who uh who is woken up and why does this always happen at 2 a.m in this scenario there is nothing for operations personnel to do yet here they are. Do you think DevOps is doing what it's supposed to do? The expertise that operations and SRE teams have is critical to developing secure, scalable systems. But the old idea of DevOps and the hurdles our industry has turned it into is holding us back. I really like the idea of this article, which is really you should always be building for a platform. You should always provide a, we call it like a gray glove approach. And a gray, uh, just blame image, image magic. Always blame Im image magic. Image magic is just the worst. Uh, it's also the best at the exact same time. But a gray glove is where it's not white glove, but it's also it's not no glove, right? It's not black glove. I'm not sure what the opposite of white glove is. I've never even thought about that. Uh, but it allows you to be able to just launch something and have that work. Or you could just build it yourself. You know, like you kind of get some options there. Uh, show of hands. How many people in your organization think CICD is DevOps? I think it's a mix. And Netflix, it's a little bit more unique in a sense. I don't think anyone could say it's any one thing. It's like a bunch of people's response. Show of hands. How many people in your organization think they don't need DevOps because they run serverless? I knew it was a serverless article. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Uh, show of hands, how many of you think above two interpretations are a problem? Yes. Uh, to most, the term DevOps have completely lost its meaning. That's, I mean, it's true. I actually don't even know what DevOps means at this point. I just assume platform engineer. If you're really, really doing DevOps, you th uh, do you think reinventing all of the commodity is really worth your engineering team's time? Is that good investment for the business? You built it, run it, pfft. More like you build it, but it takes longer than your sprint estimates and you cu cut corners on the op bit that doesn't fit your definition of done. <laughs> Isn't that just all engineering? Can we just apply this to every last bit of engineering ever for all time? What'd you do? Uh, I cut some corners. And then after cutting corners, I cut some more corners. You know what I mean? Know what I mean? Then I did a dis these nuts joke on Twitter. Um... Legend silo or not legend silos, knowledge silos and expertise are two sides of the same coin. From full stack engineering to DevOps practitioner, our industry loves to pretend everyone can do everything. We're an industry of hobbyists. We love to tinker. I don't know if we are fooling ourselves or if the industry has been exploiting our hobby driven nature, but it's time for DevOps to get thrown out of the airlock. Damn. Pour one out for DevOps. Uh, the growing zeitgeist is that platform engineering is the future. And given that I co-founded a project a product in the space, I sure hope so. Unfortunately, organizations can't get there by expecting the DevOps team to do it. I'm sorry, but copy pa pasting some Terraform modules between your Git repos is terrible platform. 
Your engineers don't want to deal with it. And inevitably, your ops team will be on the hook for supporting it. Hell, even if HashiCorp is jumping on the no-code provision train for their please contact sales plan, huh? Seems like all these companies with enterprise bucks are struggling too. Remember that. Uh, so how does the average organization get to the promised land of platform engineering? Okay, good. I want to see some action here. Simple. Just hire some more front-end and back-end engineers to develop a great internal pass with all the golden paths your operation uh, operations team is architecting while you are trying to build your actual product that runs on top of it. It's that simple. Just pay a couple million. Okay. Obviously, easier said than done. To get there, many organizations will need a reality check. Welcome, welcome to reality, bitch. Uh, for every operations person without software development skills, there are 40 engineers without cloud operation skills. If you're going to build an internal platform, uh, you'll need expert experts with overlapping experience in both fields working together. You are also going to need a shitload of time and budget. This isn't a hackathon project. It isn't a pet project of the new CTO with a wild hair up their ass to plant their flag on the business. <laughs> Shit. You can give a cute skunk works name to the show, everyone. You have access to Wikipedia too. But building an internal uh, platform is a startup within your primary business. Building an internal development platform is like changing the tires and engine of a car while it is hurtling toward a cliff. Stay agile. Stay thirsty, my friends. Isn't that magic team called DevOps? You will get that shit out of here. Okay, buddy? Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. We're not gonna. We're not doing around here. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but DevOps is bullshit. Uh, migrate an auxiliary service to get it quickly. Wait, wait. I I dyslexia that one. Migrate an auxiliary service to it quickly. Get feedback from your engineering customers. Yes, engineering customers. Engineering customers. Boober type. They aren't your team anymore. They are your business's second set of customers. And if these customers aren't buying it, you'll end up with morale problems, engineering pinning for the old ways, pining for the old ways, and a boatload of debt and a bunch of wasted time and effort. Chin up. You or the new CTO's next team can get it done. You hear that, people? Shin up. Bootstraps. Pull them. Something about a cowboy. Cowboy up. Ride a horse. Wait, ride a cowboy? Save a horse? What's the phrase? I can't remember. Uh... Anyways, uh, if you're planning to build a platform, there are five core co uh, components that are required. But in our experience, there are a few more attributes that make for a great platform. Extendable. With open source tooling, teams and workloads are different and will have different golden paths. If an IDP has one opinion, I don't know what an IDP is, uh, has one opinion way to run your workload, it is no better than a POS. An abstraction over Kubernetes is not enough. IDPs must work on all workload types, whether containerized, serverless, or virtualized. Anti-lock-in. You should be able to walk away from a bad build or buy decision without risking production or having an arduous mi migration process. I mean, you're always locked in at some level. Uh, security compliance and guardrails must be built in. Without them, you are not enabling self-service. Yeah, this is good. You should really, security and stuff should just be in there. You shouldn't, you should never have a dev work on security. Did you know the time I worked on something that involved security? You know the time that I did? I got, I actually built something that got its own named attack after it okay i got my own named attack how many of you guys got that how many of you guys got the uh the what is it called the uh something grizzly attack uh gosh what is it now i can't even remember what it's called it's called the something grizzly attack uh grizz the grizzly repulsive grizzly <laughs> <laughs> repulsive grizzly denial of service yes i made this you're you're welcome i made this article possible okay i made that i programmed it it was i it was i who both discovered and made it <laughs> Oh, Nix would not have helped this. Um, but yeah, I, I, I made I, I made the first one on Netflix. I legitimately took down all of our non-production services with a bash while loop. That is it. 
That's it. I took down everything. I kept it down for hours. It was simple. I could have taken down entire production with a thousand requests. That's it. 1,000 requests would have just blinked out Netflix forever. I was pretty impressed with myself, not going to lie. Uh, powerful building blocks. Don't worry, it's gone now. It's all gone now, but, uh, you know, I did that. I, I did that. I thought blue screens were good. Yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Uh, let's see. Powerful building blocks. Uh, to increase engineering velocity, we have an industry-wide shortage of expert expertise in the cloud space. A great IDP. I still don't know what IDP means. Should have safe, dependable building blocks for designing cloud services quickly. Uh, enabling experimentation through flexibility and extensibility. If you have to reach for another tool or platform to see how your app would work in a serverless container or with a different pub sub system, you are going to receive pushback from your stakeholders in your IDP. IDPs must enable experimentation so the right decision can be made for our applications. <sighs> I wonder how, how loose can you really go? Like how many different pub sub systems should you have? How many different, like, I don't know. That sounds very flexible. Ephemeral environments for applications and infrastructure uh, must be supported. Our application is becoming so heavily dependent on cloud services. If you can't provision dependencies like buckets, queues, or databases when you open a pull request, you are really getting close to approximation to production. Configuring, alerting, and monitoring. This is my this this is a sweet this is like a wheelhouse right here. I love this for provision uh, provision infrastructure and applications with good defaults. If engineers can deploy their own resources, they must be monitored without requiring an extra tool to configure. Otherwise, the likelihood that those resources have alerts configured will decrease significantly. Yeah, there's like your base level alerts, like how's the service doing, but then there's also secondary level alerts. Like, is your service actually operating correctly? Has one change to another actually started causing real issues? And so there is always going to be a, a second level hand bespoke monitoring that must be required. You know what I mean? Platform engineering is possible and it is the future. Our system are likely more complicated and higher scale earlier as more and more parts of the world get online. We're creating a great new engineers daily out of, a, out of boot camps, but we aren't excelling in operational maturity as an industry. We have a lot of data to protect. We are stewards of personal information. Customers assume we have fiduciary responsibilities. We, but we mostly act like hobbyists. We need to make sure platform engineering is the next bullshit buzzword. I liked it. I actually really liked this article. Yeah, DevOps is bullshit. What a crap article. <laughs> I mean, what I like about the article is that they're put that they're putting forth this idea that you should be building a uh, you should be building platforms, which I totally agree with. Right? I totally agree with you should be putting together platforms. What you should not be doing is putting together like you should not have someone just always doing all the grunt work for everything at all times because that is truly unscalable right it is terrible um you know what i mean and i mean that like it really makes a big difference what does he mean by platform like the ability internal development platform okay it's like you need to be able to launch a service a microservice it needs to be able to have databases it needs to be able to have this that and the other how do you get that all done internally within your company well for the most part what you're going to be doing at any small company is that you're going to be just setting all that shit up yourself right you're going to have your own bespoke version and the team next door to you is going to have their own bespoke version and kind of what the the, the thesis of this article is is that you just kind of copy pasta each other's configs and that's platform and so when something needs to change you have this like golden set of configs that everyone uses to launch all their crap but then you bespoke it out yourselves and then everything is hard to deal with there's no platform there's just configuration being copied around right which is total insanity but it does happen it completely happens uh it's not versioned absolutely definitely well i mean it's versioned by get peace out prime and have a great day after meetings hey have a good one buddy what is a platform a platform is something that does this for you right I need to launch a new service. What are my language choices? I have Node or Java at Netflix. That's pretty much what you have. You also kind of have Go starting to come up. Okay, I'm going to have Go. I need to be able to communicate with the database. Okay, communicate with the database. Here's how you launch it. I need to be able to do this. Okay, you can do that. This is how you launch it. Oh, you need to be able to have logging. Okay, this is how you do it. This is how you launch it, right? Like you kind of have to enable each one of the things and blah, 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 and boom. Now you have yourself a service. It's that simple. But here's the deal, people. Twitch.tv. I need to go because I, I just hear my, my, my little phonesy is pinging. Yep, that's like my fifth ping. 